Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Cunell, and welcome to the first of uh, six webinar series. Um, this is the Responsible Trial and Tourism f uh, Forum fifth year, and I can't believe that we started in 2007. And uh, we are uh, 2011, and really excited about uh, this uh, new webinar format. Now, since we started, uh, the RTTF's objectives uh, have always been to engage the travel and tourism industry about issues of sustainability. And uh, we feel that this medium will give us uh, access to, uh, to a wider audience. Um, the uh, six webinar um, series have been designed to, um, uh, based on input uh, from, a, from a survey we did following the 2010 uh, presentation, the 2000, uh, sorry, 2010 RTTF, and uh, it, it really is meant to present an introductory concept of sustainability for travel and tourism. Uh, and uh, uh, we include destination, accommodation, so, uh, transportation, as well as the two travel categories, such as uh, adventure and volunteerism. Uh, if you have not done so already, please register for all of them. Uh, tell your friends. Now, the webinar will be done in two parts. Uh, the, the first intends to provide an introduction, and it is uh, done by the area. And will be a generally and will illustrate the best particular topic. What I'm going to do for this, uh, um, I, I'm going Introduction, and then we're lucky to have uh, Mr. Michel Lemay from Transat uh, that is going to present uh, the, their fantastic work that they're currently doing. Um, to manage the questions, we're going to do them at the end, and then I'll prompt you through um, through some of them. So, what are we going to cover today? Um, the, this is a very schematic introduction to concepts of sustainability and responsible practices. Uh, as you know, it's a very complex topic. Uh, if anyone wants to deepen their understanding of sustainable tourism, please register for all of them. But I'm also teaching an online course from UBC this fall. So if you're interested, just let me know, email me, and I'll pass on some more information on that. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, the, you know, the scale and breadth of tourism. The, you know, the numbers really illustrate the importance of our, uh, of our sector. I'm going to talk about the paradox of tourism, uh, how um, and societies, but the uh, to, to uh, what is sustainability, uh, you know, green ability and then you know this is a, this is actually a very important distinction uh, to, to make and uh, I know it's going to make a difference in the way that you view green and sustainability uh, what does it mean for our industry in, in, in our in the context of tourism uh, there are many definitions and I'm just going to present a couple of them why should you care I mean there's a few studies that support the uh, some of the, the reasons why you should uh, sustainability as a mega trend and why it uh, it is inevitable and uh, uh, what is being done globally uh, uh, both in the public and the private sector and then some steps on becoming a sustainable travel business so to put this into context, uh, you need to have an idea of the scale uh, of the tourism industry, and it's huge. And I'm pretty sure that you've seen these numbers before. These are from the UNWTO Tourism Highlights uh, uh, 2011 edition, which reflects numbers in 2010. 100 million people travel the world this year, and half of them um, visiting friends and so on, and then 51% use air to get there. So that is a massive influence in in, uh, in the environmental uh, area. 5% um, of the of the global GDP uh, is what tourism uh, provides to to in its contribution. Um, it is about 30% of the world export of the commercial services and 8% of global workforce, about 200 million people jobs. Now, tourism, tourism has proven to be a, a very resilient uh, market, although much of the growth at the moment, for obvious reasons, is in the emerging economies. Uh, it, it is estimated to grow at a rate of about 4 to 5% for 2011, despite all the economic woods we and that the uh, global uh, GDP expected of 
six. At eight, we expect to have about one billion people moving about the planet by 2025, and that's not really very far away. So with this kind of numbers, uh, we are faced with a, with a paradox, right? And, and essentially, tourism can be a force for good. However, as it continues to grow, it will put more and more pressure on the environment um, and, and, the, and the social fabric of these destinations. Now, destinations are our product, and, uh, and preserving the places people love to visit will definitely benefit our sector for the long term. But uh, above all, it will provide travelers with a, uh, an authentic experience, which is, uh, should be our ultimate aim within the sustainability context. But was that, what are some issues that uh, tourism growth um, presents the, uh, the industry? These are some of the negative impacts. Um, they, they are uh, the economic, the dilution of economic benefit to the community. Uh, there are environmental impacts, and there are obviously you know, the, the social issues. In the economic realm, there is a term called leakage, uh, which means that for every dollar that your customer spends on their holiday, only a few cents may actually remain in the economy. Um, and this is really critical uh, because um, it, it is determined essentially by the fact that it may be that uh, only hotels that are part of multinational corporations are being used, that the destinations have to import uh, food, liquor, um, let's say furniture when they're building the, ho the hotels. So to mitigate that and increase the, uh, that multiplier, uh, we need to support the local businesses as much as it is possible. Uh, inflation. Um, especially in some of the developing countries, and we say, wow, this is expensive for us as well. Imagine how expensive it is for some of, uh, uh, for, for the local population. The environmental impacts are generally better known. Um, you know, they are related, and more obvious perhaps, they're related to energy, water use, uh, there is uh, the management of tourist waste, the erosion of the natural areas, uh, overbuilding, that often happens is huge discharge into the oceans and et cetera. There's also um, issues of congestion, overuse, and crowding. I know this is obvious as well. So I'm pretty sure that uh, some of you have been in the business for a long time and have visited resorts uh, you know, even just three, four, five years earlier and have seen massive changes around traffic and, and pollution. Um, there's changes in the traditional culture because uh, of the habits of tourism. You know, tourism also has a, destiny, has a tendency to, to make destinations more homogeneous, and, and therefore this causes a, a tourism can, on the positive side, do that, but it can also go the other way. This also display, displacement of uh, local population, and this is this is uh, you know a very sad thing that happens sometimes with tourism. Hotels may be built uh, over um, people are displaced, but so that you know properties can be constructed in areas for tourists and uh, and some of their livelihoods, such as uh, you know maybe perhaps fishing in certain coastal areas or, or farming, uh, may be taken away from them. So this is on the, to, to give you a you know an idea of. Uh, the other side of that paradox. Uh, so therefore, if we work from the premise that one, tourism is going to continue to grow, you know, two, that it is a very big contributor to many economies, and three, that you know, the growth will, will put pressure on the environment and society, then you know, the, the question is how do we ensure that uh, we are doing something? What is our role? And I think our role is, is, is very substantial, very important, and is substantial to the benefit of, uh, of um, uh, the destination. Um, so we become a sustainable tourism business. How, how do we do that? How, how do we embrace sustainability uh, really at all levels of the travel and tourism value chain? And how do we support green tourism businesses? And then how will help clients make uh, the right choices uh, by engaging them? Now, I know this is a, is a difficult endeavor, but the more we learn, the more we are starting to move towards 
um, uh, this, this complicated but definitely worthwhile journey of becoming a sustainable tourism. Now, to understand sustainability, I thought it would be very important for us to look at what, what are the these core concepts. And this can apply to absolutely anything in your life when you're thinking about, you know, what kind of um, car you're going to buy, what kind of clothes you're going to buy, your food, and so on. Think if, if it meets any of this criteria. One of the first one is future thinking because it is about the impacts into the future. And this is often referred to generational responsibility for 25, 50 years, even up to 100, um, looking forward. Our economic system, unfortunately, is not designed for that because generally we go quarter to quarter, especially in the markets. Uh, above all, it is a kind of uh, uh, intergenerational justice uh, for the local people and for the future of tourists as well, who also deserve to have you know, say the same experience that you and I have today. The next level is the ecosystem thinking. Um, it thinks essentially about the whole planet, right? It thinks about uh, the, the, the water, waste, ecology. Uh, is it okay to drain a mangrove to, to make a hotel beachfront? You know, um, that is now questionable. Should we leave the transitional zones? Are we sacrificing perhaps a tourist ocean view, but we're saving um, a whole uh, e e ecological area for future generations? Then we talk about the carrying capacity of the planet. So in tourism, it, it, it refers specifically to uh, how many tourists can you we fit into a destination before it starts to degenerate? It loses its attractiveness and in appeal, uh, its appeal declines, and you just don't want to send people there anymore. And that has huge repercussions for the, uh, for the, for the local people. We look at the other uh, uh, spectrum, which is the social. And uh, here, you know, equity and international tourism is serviced by businesses. And it is important to understand if these enterprises are treating their employees well and if they are, are you know, not taking away their ability to live in dignity as a, as a, as a culture or, or as, as a country. Now, how does that translate into business? Now, some of you might have heard of the uh, uh, triple bottom line, uh, which is nicely illustrated by the three-legged stool. Uh, here you see the three uh, 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 legs, first the economic, environmental, and social legs. And um, you take a leg out, and essentially that's not sustainability anymore. It needs to be able to stand on its own. We need to take a holistic approach, uh, and that really what, what sustainability means. Now, in tourism, you can use a Venn diagram. Well, I mean, I like this also. It looks at uh, you know, the environmental conservation, preservation, local economy benefits, social, cultural benefits. And then in the middle there, where they all overlap, is where sustainability lies. Um, I often get asked about green and sustainable issues around terminology. Now, many people to, to demonstrate their becoming more, more responsible. And that's where there, there is a very important dis distinction. Um, I really like the way the authors uh, of um, here, um, uh, Ernst Yarnella and Le Levine and Lancaster, uh, created uh, a dimension and then the difference between green and sustainable. Now, you can see that how um, being green is, is really not enough to make a lasting change. We need to embed it into everything we do. So we, we you know, need to seek out within our supply chain you know, for best practices in all the three areas. And Michelle can expand into this a lot more. So green, in essence, means the environmental leg only. Uh, it looks at uh, individual components, such as energy, water, waste, et cetera. But you also need to understand how these actions may affect the local community and employees. And that's what we're talking about, the whole holistic approach. It also tends to have a, a tactical application. It's not necessarily strategic. You know, we can change a lab, light bulb, but can we invest in solar panels to reduce the use of fossil fuels? And one of the things is that don't fall into the trap of the low-hanging fruit. Um, it's good to change a light bulb, 
but it's not enough. You've got to continue to make um, you know, changes that are deeper. Also, uh, it can turn into greenwashing. And, you know, I, and I actually have done uh, a couple of workshops on this, and uh, there is a, I'll provide a link um, to, to one of the articles and, and a blog that I, that I did on greenwashing, which you may find interesting. So business will always look at, you know, at improving um, efficiencies to, to, to save money, but sustainability improve within the full value chain of, of tra in the travel and tourism industry. So, you know, again, your office may be green, but how about your hotels, your transportation? And really, do not underestimate your ability as a business to influence your supply chain and, um, and your clients. We do have quite a bit of power if we actually do it together. Um, so sustainability in the tourism industry. Now, there's, there's uh, a lot of confusion always. You know, there are many definitions. Uh, there are many designations, responsible travel, green tourism, sustainable tourism, uh, and the sectors, too, within that. Adventure, community, rural tourism, goes on and on and on. And, uh, and also, there are so many certification and l labels, um, uh, guidelines, criteria, that it makes it very, very difficult to say this is what it is. It is a, a little uh, complicated, and we need to uh, broaden our understanding right across the group. So there's one definition, and there are many of them, that, uh, that I really like because it links to the core concepts of sustainability that we addressed earlier, right? So sustainable tourism development that meets the needs of present tourists and host regions while protecting and enhancing opportunities for the future. So here we're looking at that future thinking we saw earlier. It is leading to management in such a way that aesthetic needs can be fulfilled. So we're looking at, uh, at ecosystems by here in tourism, needs is really interesting. A place has to retain its, its other natural beauty, its, its cultural value. Um, and essentially, you know, it, it support systems, so diversity and life support. So we have the social, the ecosystem. Uh, so that's one definition. To, to adopt um, as a guide. I also talk about the difference between uh, travel sustainable tourism this term because um, here we say in the term ecotourism itself refers to a segment within the tourism sector with focus on environmental sustainability while the sustainability principle should apply to all types of tourism activities operations establishments and projects including conventional and alternative forms so here you go here we're looking at how eco it, it's more like a representation of green versus the whole idea that sustainability applies to everyone, everybody. It doesn't matter the size of your business. Um, and we're going to be hearing from Transat, which is a very big business and a publicly traded company, and some of their initiatives uh, that are within all their tourism activities and operations. Now, um, why should you care? Uh, there are many reasons why you should care. As a business, you know, from doing what is right and driven by your values to, to really understanding the issues at a global level and, and specifically to, to our business because we are a global business. Uh, and inevitably, even if you're a domestic, you, you deal in the domestic realm, we're still subjected to global issues of economy, climate, and other regulations. Um, you need to listen to the market and your stakeholders, uh, you know, your peers in the business, your Customers, and you know, and in a way, also how the media is reporting on this on these trends, right? Now, one of the things I, I wanted to talk for for a minute on on uh, on this is the um, sustainability as a mega trend, and uh, the mega trend in in the in literature actually is being the that fundamental shift in the competitive landscape, and that uh, creates inescapable threats. So, two mega trends. Um, 
sorry, inescapable threats and game-changing opportunities, right? So the two things, the two mega trends that um, happened in the last 30 years, which inform how sustainability is different, is the quality of movement of the 70s and 80s. Essentially, this debunked the whole idea of cost, cost versus quality trade-off. So in our sector, it became health and safety and accommodation, transportation, security and destinations, consumer protection, um, uh, you know, truth in advertising, accurate hotel descriptions. The IT movement in the 80s and 90s was driven by, you know, by banking and the airlines and the efficient um, uh, and efficiencies. Actually, they drove through automation. Uh, it saw the birth of online giants. Uh, sites uh, in a portfolio like hotels.com, it essentially you know, desegregated the supply chain and really changed the way the travel industry uh, operates today. So what's different about sustainability as a mega trend from quality movement and IT is that before it was someone fenced within the organization strategy. Sustainability issues, you know, are so overarching on the other hand and so interconnected connected that it really requires a great deal of understanding of the issue. It needs partnerships, advocacy, and a model of engagement with suppliers, customers, employees, which is really unprecedented in the history of business management. And I'm not really talking on <laughs> tourism. I've done another travel, in other um, uh, economic sectors, and uh, w the, the trend is definitely moving towards seeing this uh, as a, a sustainable imperative, as the Harvard Business Review article, which you can find online, states. Uh, the other couple of uh, points, and I'm going to be accelerating the presentation to allow uh, Michelle to um, um, to speak uh, on, on with a real case study, is um, the uh, consumer awareness, right? And there are some studies here. Uh, TUI did one uh, over 4,000 people um, that essentially say that consumers are suggesting that they want the issues to be taken care of by their company they buy from. They're, uh, they're saying just, they, you know, just as long as they don't have to bother with it themselves, right? <laughs> uh, and this is, you know, verbatim from the research. Um, be an appetite for sustainability. However, we need to be aware that there are behavioral and action gaps, which are commonly found in research into ethical and sustainable uh, shopping. Now, this should not stop businesses from providing products which are sustainable. Uh, then there was a couple of other studies. Um, Expedia and Travelocity. The change in lifestyles, yeah, this is happening. In 2008, Lonely Planet did a, a survey of 24,000 uh, travelers, and they said that they rather travel in a low-impact way, added value to their experience. Uh, in the industry, well, you're here today, and thank you for that. We are becoming much more aware, and uh, we're starting to see the business case on, on creating and promoting sustainable products. Now, the media, that's very important. There is attention to sustainability issues, and this has raised, um, uh, increased actually considerably in the, in the last uh, um, 10 years. Uh, but we also need to um, you know, give them guidance to recognize uh, the sustainable tourism providers uh, and the, their efforts, and also, you know, understand the different sustain, uh, sustainability um, certification schemes. I won't go into this because we don't have time. This is a completely, uh, it's a one-hour webinar, and I would love to invite the people from the uh, UNW to, uh, to present it. But if you go into the, into the uh, link, you will be able to uh, see the, uh, the work that has been done on the 37 criteria and addresses all the core issues that we, we've talked about it today. Uh, last couple of slides essentially are, are the taste of some of the stuff that you can do as a business. Uh, the, uh, the, again, this warrants a separate session, and we have had uh, Dr. Bob Willard uh, come and speak to us in the uh, two previous RTTFs. Now, tourism, how to apply it actually to tourism? You know, we have eight sectors, sectors and about eight SMEs. And, uh, you know, they're small, the whole industry but it's in very you have a role to play with the size of your business. Uh, just very quickly, pre-compliance, uh, this is where it's in place. It is, uh, we don't have much of that in the, in the developed world, but there are some destinations that still holds true. 
The compliance side is what you have to do as a minimum to be able to operate as a business, and essentially this is focused on consumer protection, health and safety, uh, but not so much on the environment uh, or even social um, uh, equity and social justice in the destinations. Uh, beyond compliance means that you voluntarily start to become green and sustainable, right? So that's not because you're told, but because you saw a business case for it. So there's cost saving in it. There may also be a PR crisis of some kind in your business, your suppliers or your destinations uh, in which you operate. And uh, we, um, you know, see the writing on the wall, like regulation and airlines are facing right now in Europe with the carbon. The integrated strategy, and uh, Michelle will talk more about that, this is when organizations start to see that this is good for business, and they see the value of incorporating sustainability, which, which leads to cost saving, customer loyalty, and then new products are created. The purpose and passion one, well, some companies actually start here. They don't actually progress through the stage. Uh, this could be someone like Mountain Equipment Co-op. This could be some ecologists or venture companies. Um, there's also, um, you know, this, the seven-step sustainability change process. Again, this is uh, for you to, to go through uh, 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 because we don't have time. Uh, another webinar, hopefully, on that. On it, um, and it essentially, mean goes from wake up and decide, which is what a lot of people are doing now to do something to essentially creating products and processes which are totally aligned with your employees, your customers, and your supply chain. Now, Dr. Willer always says that uh, the, the process of sustainability is not linear and sequential. It is always a lot messier than that. Now, if you skip a step, you will have to come back to it later, um, and these are repeated basically with multiple groups. Uh, finally, uh, this and just uh, a simpler way of saying all the other things that we've said in the last uh, 20 minutes. Um, uh, 10 steps from uh, changebiz.com. Uh, understand your brand, your customers, walk the talk. Use corporate responsibility to manage your business completely, uh, you know, in a, com in a com completely competitive way, if you will. Create new products, get engaged with your peers in, in, in the business, tell your story, engage your clients. And again, don't underestimate your client's desire to be part of this process. And above all, uh, what is not measured can be managed. So consider perhaps doing a carbon footprint or other ways of, of uh, creating a baseline for your business on corporate social responsibility. Ask your suppliers about their responsible practices. So this is a, a very, very quick uh, <laughs> um, summary of some of the key steps. And um, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention on to, to Michelle. Thank you. And then questions will come at the end of Michelle's presentation. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to be here today uh, and compliment uh, uh, Jacqueline's presentation, which was uh, quite comprehensive. Um, my contribution uh, today, uh, of course, I'm going to start with a bit of but uh, obviously, uh, I'm here as uh, uh, the main uh, owner of uh, our sustainability program at Transat that we started in 2006, 2007. Um, and of course, my goal today is to share with you in very concrete terms uh, how uh, we did uh, implement and devised our program and what are the challenges uh, that we've encountered and, uh, and maybe uh, the challenges that are still here today. Um, as uh, Jacqueline mentioned, obviously, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to start from the principle that uh, all of you have at least a slight understanding of uh, Transat. We're a mass tourism tour operator. Uh, we're not exactly uh, the small uh, ecotourism outfit uh, with 3 million customers and $3.5 billion in sales. So we basically uh, sell travel services uh, uh, in Canada, France, and the UK mainly, uh, and our destinations are basically uh, all over the world. So, um, to, uh, to start, uh, well, first of all, uh, my my uh, the, the my my plan, my structure for the presentation, I will very briefly uh, touch uh, upon uh, our our vision uh, in the sense that I'm, I'm going to try to explain. 
why we see a business issue here uh, with some definitions and the scope of work. And then I'm going to go uh, into sharing with you a, a very concrete view of the approach we've taken and the key programs uh, that, we, uh, that we have as of today. So let's start. Um, well, that's been covered uh, by Jacqueline already. Basically, tourism is a big industry, much bigger than people uh, usually think. Uh, we want to see it continue to grow, obviously, uh, when uh, in, you know, in, the ex in the expression sustainable development, I think it's important to remember that the, there's the word development. So this is not about shrinking the industry, but about uh, changing or evolving the way it, it operates. Uh, but yes, it is a source of pressure. Uh, in terms of the uh, environment and also in terms of the economy and social issues explained by, by Jacqueline. And obviously, uh, in a city like Paris, uh, I guess there are no significant uh, issues related to waste water management uh, deriving from, from, from tourism. Uh, that I that I think uh, everybody will understand, but uh, the situation obviously in a destination like Cancun, for example, uh, is is obviously very very different, and the pressure the pressures uh, can be very real. So, uh, uh, in a way, uh, this is about protecting the assets that are essential to the future of tourism: uh, clean uh, beaches, landscapes heritage sites, uh, and obviously the acceptability of tourism by communities. Um, it's also about dealing with the fact that more and more there's going to be pressure on the industry uh, from governments all around the world uh, in the form of, you know, uh, fees, taxes of all sorts. Uh, that could have the potential of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 diminishing or reducing the amount of travelers uh, around the world. This has been uh, the case uh, in several markets in relation with uh, carbon, uh, carbon gases emissions, for example. Uh, more and more customers uh, expect companies, their suppliers, to be more sustainable. Jacqueline touched on that. Uh, are for companies that operate uh, in the way companies are supposed to operate in the 21st centuries. And for us at Transat, this has been uh, not just something that uh, I've picked up from a textbook, but uh, it's been a reality. We have actual shareholders uh, that have uh, you know, uh, put some forms of uh, pressure upon us that have asked us questions about a number of issues. Um, and finally, uh, the employees are also that the workforce is also in your, uh, has also uh, expectations uh, versus their employers into being uh, being more sustainable so uh, sorry for that um, so in other words uh, this is about asset management uh, in a large measure uh, this is about also preventing uh, regulation um, is about business uh, generating additional sales from customers, very much related to the business development. In terms of the investor, this is about protecting the sources of capital and maybe reducing the cost of capital for the companies. And of course, in terms of the employees, uh, this is something that can you know, uh, increase pride uh, and uh, and uh, reduce uh, reduce turnover. Some numbers, again, in the same spirit as those uh, mentioned by Jacqueline, customers uh, do care. There's numbers of surveys that have been done. This one here, uh, we've done with our own customers in Canada a couple of years ago, and uh, as you can see. Uh, most of the customers are aware of the issues and, um, uh, you know, express uh, their preference for a sustainable 
supplier or a sustainable product. Obviously, uh, they don't necessarily want to pay more for that, and that uh, don't always translate into their uh, uh, buying behaviors yet. But what's clear here is the trend, and uh, one is to uh, you know manage um, as a function of the of the trend. Uh, some numbers here again coming slightly different in the same direction. So this is another definition of sustainable tourism that we've adopted for ourselves at Transat with our employees and with our partners, uh, a vision of tourism development that respects uh, nature, um, host community, uh, and their values and provide uh, and, 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 and combines positive benefits for local populations with an enriching experience for travelers. Uh, <clears throat> And this, this whole approach intersects, of course, very well with the traditional corporate social responsibility model. And this is a slide I use a lot with our employees and with our partners to express the reality that some years ago, I guess, in some way, our, a business like Transat would have been seen as part of a triangular system where we were here essentially to sell a product to a customer so that a shareholder uh, at, the other end, at the other end of the triangle is making, is making money. Uh, obviously, in, especially in the 21st century, the reality is much more complex and the number of, of stakeholders is, is, is much higher. Doing business in a different way by having a, a broader uh, uh, vision, so to speak. So, uh, so it's not about uh, it, it, at first, uh, as a first stage, uh, what we say to people here, what we've said to people here for a number of years, is about this is about values, uh, values and relationships with a number of stakeholders. In other words, it's about changing the culture, changing the mindset. And one of the great, uh, I think, lessons uh, that we've learned is that doesn't happen. At So our vision is to try to become one of the most responsible mass tourism operators uh, by protecting the essential of tourism development, heritage and communities, environment, biodiversity, and so on. Uh, we want to see tourism continue to grow uh, with all stakeholders getting their fair share, including destinations. And the way to do that uh, in, in broad terms uh, to uh, you know, minimize the negatives and optimize the positives. I'll go into the details in a minute. Six areas for action for a tour operator. Of course, first of all, number one, integrating sustainability into operations. That that is, you know, first of all, clean your own house. Supply chain management influence the behavior of your supplier because as a tour operator, when when, when our, our leverage is about the fact that we buy billions of dollars of services of, of tourism services from third parties and we can exert an influence an influence on their behavior employee training and education obviously to nurture the culture change product management uh, in the sense that if you are a sustainable company normally your product should reflect that and evolve in a certain direction customer relations and education and of course, a new way to approach to approach relations with destination. So, our approach is about starts values, and based on our new values, uh, this is implied improved processes.
nearly uh, half a million dollars. Uh, just a few examples, uh, we've worked with an NGO, we are working, I should say, because this, pro this uh, pro project is underway. Uh, we're working with um, uh, a Canadian NGO and a Peruvian uh, NGO uh, for the restoration of uh, 16th century haciendas uh, near Machu Picchu, the general idea being the, the, the offer tourists don't just go a uh, quick visit to Machu Picchu, but uh, reside in the area maybe for a, uh, a day or more more economy. Same principle here in Tunisia, where we uh, have a fund of a heritage site near picture here in the middle is the inaugural of the site uh, last year or with the transit officials there and so on. Uh, we've also, that's a different program, but we've also just restructured, I would say, our uh, donations program to take more action internationally. So we became a partner of SOS Children's uh, Villages, which is basically an organization that takes care of children all around the world. Uh, but there are other initiatives that we've taken. We've, we have a program right now to, to, for volunteering, uh, volunteer work uh, by our employees. Uh, we have employees that went, who went to uh, Africa uh, and who then shared their experience with the others through the intranet. This is this has been successful. Uh, in terms of, you know, uh, in, well, on many levels, but including, of course, in terms of uh, evolving the culture. Child sex tourism that we started last year, uh, this is a huge, huge uh, endeavor. Um, as you may uh, know, child sex tourism is a real problem. Two million children uh, suffer each year from, uh, from crimes. Uh, sex crimes committed uh, everywhere around the world, and uh, we've uh, we've made a formal agreement with uh, Beyond Borders, a Canadian NGO, who is right now helping us uh, build and implement training programs for our employees. First step being obviously to uh, to make this a priority for the whole organization, so uh, people put do not put their hand their heads in the sand. Over time, uh, of course, the ambition is to influence uh, behaviors of cu uh, customers and uh, and uh, suppliers. Uh, as, I, as, as I mentioned earlier, this is an area which is very important because as a tour operator, we buy so much tourism services uh, that, of course, uh, we can uh, um, actually uh, exert, uh, exert a real, real, real influence in terms of uh, changing the behaviors. So we have, uh, as a first step, focused on hotels. Uh, and developed our own hotel program, uh, as, you know, aside and independently uh, of all the certification schemes uh, that exist, um, uh, we are proposing 55, this is in eight sectors, to our, our hotel partners. Uh, and that includes a system to monitor uh, their efforts. So this is underway right now. This uh, has meant uh, lots of learning, uh, even for us. If I had asked the questions to people here three, four years ago, what are the best practices in hotel management in terms of sustainability? I think not many people would have known the answer. Uh, that's the situation is very different now. Are a few examples, of course, of um, communication pieces. Uh, first, as I mentioned, communication with employees and communication with customers is, of course, extremely important because this is the way uh, you can, over time, change. Uh, Uh, which is again something that you know w you wouldn't have seen uh, some years ago. Um, very quickly, some lessons learned. Uh, essentially, uh, and again, uh, if if you open any textbook on the topic, you 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 will not be surprised to see that one of the lessons that we've learned is that the involvement of uh, top management. Uh, is crucial. Uh, we we would have um, succeeded implementing all this 
uh, without the strong backing of, uh, of top management. The employees have proved to be a very fertile uh, ground. Uh, actually, um, you, you, we've seen very, uh, very early in the process that the younger generations uh, would get extremely excited about this. This is a reality. Um, I would say that the challenge is between the two in the sense that in a large company like this, uh, when comes the time you know, of having the middle management on board, uh, some, some do understand and believe, uh, some are more uh, skeptical. Uh, this is, as, my, as I said, a culture shift. Uh, so for me, it, you know, it takes time and it will take time. Uh, we're very proud of what we've achieved and what I've showed here. Uh, uh, much work uh, remains. Uh, this is a major endeavor just at the beginning, say at the very So that completes my presentation. Almost on time, Jacqueline. Yes. Um, and I'm I'm prepared to take questions. Uh, it seems that there are a few questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you, Michelle, very much for that. Now I, I should tell everyone that I've known Michelle for a few years, uh, and uh, I've been visiting his office. I remember I think it was 19, uh, 2000, uh, 2006 or seven when I asked yes. Air Transat to speak, and at that point Michelle said, "Well, we're not." And uh, you know, five years later, I'm really, really thrilled that uh, of the progress that Transat ha has made uh, as a former mass tour operator, um, where I used to be with Signature. Um, we, uh, I, I can, you know, the, the, the whole evolution of, of the of where Transat is today, and as Michelle said, uh, the journey is is quite admirable, uh, admirable, and and basically there's. As, as far as master operators is concerned, there's uh, really no other organization in Canada that I can see that have made uh, this huge strides in such a systematic uh, way. So uh, we're, we're thrilled to have you, and thank you very much. Uh, any of you can use Transat as a case study for best practices in responsible tourism. Um, it is a complex organization. It is very fragmented, and uh, they are basically each area as I said, systematic way. Now we have um, several questions here, and um, um, uh, I'm not sure if you maybe, we have another five minutes or so, but uh, uh, the perhaps they can all be in a way put together. Uh, I think Mark was asking about uh, if uh, in some of the research if there is a difference between um, high-end buyers or, or the lower end of the product uh, pricing, if that would make a difference in terms of selecting sustainability. Have uh, the issue around sustainable uh, certification programs, uh, of which ones may be um, worthwhile uh, adopting, and then uh, respecting host communities. Uh, I think that one is, has been answered, but uh, they are directed to, to to Michelle, I think, and I would rather um, maybe you address them than than me look into. Sure. Them. Well, I'll do my best. Sure. Uh, in terms in terms of the certification systems, um, it's it's quite a complex file because, um, and I think Jacqueline mentioned that there's a number of certification uh, systems and uh, our first uh, struggle was to try to understand them and see which ones are credible and which one are less credible because it's a, it's a smorgasbord of a certification system. So um, right now uh, we almost have made a decision about recognizing five or six uh, certification systems like Green Globe, for example, Biosphere, and Blue Flag, and a couple of others, who we feel uh, are credible, uh, especially in the sense that they uh, imply third-party uh, audit and verification. And uh, what we are shooting for is that uh, in the foreseeable future, we would like to encourage hotels uh, by mentioning the certifications in the catalogs and the brochures and the websites and so on. Now, we realize doing that research that at the moment, there are very few, 
uh, in proportion. There are very few hotels which are uh, which are certified. So the whole idea would be to encourage those who have uh, managed to get certified, and of course send a signal uh, to the others uh, that they should uh, that they should get on board. So this is very much on the radar screen, but it's proven to be a little bit more complicated than we than we thought uh, early on. Great. Um, the other question was about communities, yeah, which you've covered in uh, a little bit the, on the uh, in the program, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe what I could add on that is, of course, uh, we we don't always have uh, you know boots on the ground, so those projects are mentioned obviously are not our project, but are always uh, put together by an NGO somewhere or a community. So we we provide the funding and we provide some moral support because we can you know feature those product those pro those projects uh, in our flight magazine or on our website which is sometimes very much appreciated but it, but obviously it's not our employees who actually do the the work on the ground mm -hmm. excellent uh, Michelle can the presentation be released to the uh, sure. participants absolutely yeah, good well, thank you so much for uh, your participation, uh, Michelle. It's, uh, I think it's very comprehensive. This is the first one of the, of the six that we're doing, so we intend to address many of the issues that you have raised along the supply chain, destination, and then some other uh, market segments uh, outside of the mainstream. So uh, this is um, very valuable for us to, to set the foundation for the, the next webinar. So I really like to, um, uh, to thank you um, very much. And um, uh, if there's any other questions, we will pass them on to you. But I think Good. for now, um, I think that is it. So um, we have six more um, uh, webinars. Sorry, now it's uh, five. <laughs> uh, the next one starting is uh, sustainable destinations, and then we go down, as I, as I mentioned, the, the supply chain. So if you if you um, like this one, and uh, you can tell your friends and your business uh, partners and associates to to please uh, uh, register. business. Um, lastly, I would like to uh, thank all the sponsors. Um, and uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, Ted Rogers School of Management at uh, Ryerson, Air Canada. Um, these are all long-time sponsors, the Delta Chelsea, uh, eContact, and um, um, Travel, Travel Baxter Travel, and Travel Press and Travel Courier. Um, uh, obviously, uh, we like Uh, responsible uh, uh, travel and, and tourism, and we thank you for that. Uh, this uh, closes the uh, first webinar, so I hope to uh, see everybody on October the 12th. We'll be uh, updating the uh, website uh, uh, continuously with uh, uh, speakers as they come along, and uh, I intend to moderate uh, the, the next sessions. And